as we're getting away with uh, introductions for both teams. Cap, let's first look at the Marion offense. Marion offense will be started. The front line, the men in the trenches for the Marion Giants, starting off at left tackle, number 65, a six foot 220 pound senior, H.J. Harris. At left guard, number 64, Chris Lynch. He's a six foot 215 pound sophomore. Snapping the ball for the Giants will be number 50, Chad Crosor, uh, 12th grader, 6 foot 212 pounds. Number 63, Aaron Kennedy will be a right guard. He's a 6 foot 220 pound senior. At right tackle, number 76, Jay Edwards, a 6 foot junior. At the tight end will be number 89, Matt Johnson. He's a 5'11", 160 pound junior. The split end will be number 81, Danny Montgomery he is a 5'4", 160-pound junior. Taking the snaps for the Marion Giants will be quarterback Steve Ginnon. He's number, wearing number seven. He's a 12th grader, 6'175 pounds. In the backfield for the Marion Giants will be one of the, the halfback will be Richie Tom, Thompson. He's a junior, 5'10", 170 pounds, wearing number 26. The other halfback, number 22, Robert Carter, 5'10", 165-pound junior. Fullback for the Giants will be wearing number 47. That's Doug McClure. He's a 5'10", 185-pound sophomore. Going on with the Carmel Greyhound defense, starting off at left defensive end, number 98, David Kennedy, a 6'2", 195-pound senior at Left defensive tackle, number 54, Rick Atkins. He's a big 6'2", 236-pound senior. Nose tackle will be junior, 5'11", 191-pound, Todd Green, wearing number 51. On the right tackle side, number 79, Drew McDonald. He's a 6'2", senior. The right defensive end for the Carmel Grounds, number 96, 12th grader Josh Malinchuk. The linebackers for the Greyhounds will be Joe Kaufman, number 33, he's a junior, 5'11", 194 pounds on the left side. And then on the right side, leading tackle for the grounds, Trent Decatur, 12th grader, 6'2", 220 pounds, wearing number 44. Cornerback for the common grounds, number 24, Steve Crockett, 5'9", 160 pound senior. The other cornerback, number 21, Mark Levat. The safeties for the grounds will be number 27, Tom Moore, and number 22, John Spidell. Carmel won the toss the first, they will receive in the second half. Marion to kick off kind of a little cold night here in Marion, Indiana. Kind of chilly. We don't see a lot. But we see a little wind, not a lot of wind. A beautiful field here from Marion High School. Uh, well marked, well lighted. Really looks to be a great football complex. Some quick injuries for the Greyhounds. Joe Kaufman, a uh, junior linebacker, we could see check out some of the ball game uh, because he does have a bruised shoulder that he got from the last game. Coming in in his spot, we could see either Matt Quigley or Brian Vaughn. If you remember, Vaughn had a great game as the sectionals opened up two weeks ago. Tony Mefford will not play this evening. If, if you might play him some, but they said they very doubtedly expect to see him in because of a hit pointer, Jack Christie's ankle uh, that he sprained about three weeks ago is about 70% right now, so he could see limited action. And Jeff Taylor, they had a scare yesterday in practice. They thought he might have broken his finger, but it turns around that it's okay now. Some quick tips on Marion that the Greyhounds, I'm sure, are going to look forward. If, the scouting report says the Marion offensive line has a tendency to pop up. That does is that'll give the Greyhounds better way to go. So we could see what Carmel's going to want to do is stay down on defense, try to get every little edge they can. Coach Pesavino said for Carmel to win, it's the key is going to be on their offensive line, the Greyhound offensive line, and he needs the best game of them he's had all season one, just like they had against Ben Davis. The opening kickoff here in Marion. Lavant gets a nice kickoff, will be fielded by Thompson at the 15-yard line, brings it up to the 20, the 25, cutting it inside, drops at the 30-yard line, a slew of Greyhound tacklers in there on a great covered by the ground. So the Marion Giants will start off first and 10 from their 30-yard line, going once again over their backfield. Steve Ginnon, number 70, will, seven, will be the quarterback. And if they're running the three-back offense, Thompson, McClure, and Carter will be their running backs. Their wideouts will be, will be Gummery. So Marion comes with the wishbone formation. Ginnon, the quarterback, Thompson, McClure, and Carter, the running backs. Now Carter and Thompson are moving wide to the right. So single back formation, that is McClure. And drop back 
to pass. Looking down right side. The pass is complete to Thompson at the 45-yard line. Great pass. That is a first and 10 for the Marion Giants on the pass completion to Thompson coming out of the backfield. Split wide to the right. That pass is complete for a good 15-yard pass reception for the Marion Giants. So Gennon is one for one on the night. And Marion comes out with that first down. So Marion Giants go to the line of scrimmage once again. They have the eye formation down the backfield. Pitch back to Thompson around the right side. Thompson breaks it. gets a few yards up close to midfield around the 49-yard line after a short gain of about three yards on the play. Very interesting to see Marion come out and throw on the first down. This team runs it about 75% and throwing it about 25. So very interesting to see a team with a great running crew just come right out and throw a pass on first down. So Marion comes to the line of scrimmage. Hartman is split wide to the right. And they do have a wing back, and that is Gumery. Quick count, Gannon running the option play. Keeps it himself, runs right up the middle, and he's close to the first down over to the 45-yard line. Good sw quick snap that time by Gannon. Running the two, the I formation with the flanker back. And that will be very close to a first down. Not good enough for the first down. Just third down and just inches. Gannon was actually the leading rusher, had 109 carries with a 3.1 yard average, but he did carry the ball more than anyone else on the Marion squad. So now the Marion Giants come to the line of scrimmage. They have the I formation, two tight ends, and a flanker back. Gannon barks out the signals left and right. He's going to dive right over. He will have the first down inside the 45, around the 42 yard line. Short game for Gannon. But Gannon continues to move that offense, picking up their second first down of the ball game. Marion marching right down the field for the Greyhounds after that three-yard pickup. The Greyhound defense needing to tighten up. We're going to see a lot of defensive shifts for the Greyhounds, especially with Marion coming out of the wishbone formation. So they've got to stay and contain well. So Marion comes to the line of scrimmage. Burke is now a wing back. They have the I formation. McClure and Thompson are the running backs. Two tight ends in the ball game. Again, embarked out the signals. He's running the option play. He's going to keep it himself. Now he flips it back to Thompson, and Thompson is hit. As soon as a fumble on the play, there's a scramble for the football. Carmel Greyhounds are cheering, and it is first and 10. Carmel Greyhounds on the recovery on the 37-yard line. Getting at the last minute, lateral that ball back. And as the ball reached Thompson, a Carmel Greyhound just came in and plastered him. The ball popped loose, and the Greyhounds recovered. So it's first and 10 for the Greyhounds. Greyhounds will take it to the line of scrimmage. The backfield for the Greyhounds on this offensive drive will be Toby Cole, Mike Sharp, the running backs. Padgett taking the snaps. The wideouts will be Harrington and Gunderson. They come out with a three-back formation. Now they're shifting it around. Gunderson and Harrington move wide to the right. Ritz is the tight end. Padgett barks out the signals. Hand off to Cole right up the middle. Cole gets over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Good game on the play at that time by Cole, picking up about five yards before he's dropped down at around the 43. Toby Cole, the Greyhound, reading, leading rusher by far, has scored 15 touchdowns so far in the season. And there has only been two games when he has not scored two touchdowns, those being Warren Central and Anderson Highland. So the Greyhounds bring it to the line once again. The I formation now. Hansman and Harrington are the wideouts left and right. Cole and Sharp are Padgett's running backs in the I formation. Second down, five yards to go. Handoff right up the middle to Sharp. He's over midfield. He's into the 40, 41 yard line of the Mary Giants. Good run around the left side that time from Sharp, picking up plenty of yardage for the first down. Now a lot, lot more. Great run that time. 16 yards picked up by the speedy tailback for the Greyhounds. Last week, the Greyhounds split up carry-wise between Sharp and Cole, but Sharp came out on the top and carried the Greyhounds with 105 yards rushing last week. 8.36 left to go in the first quarter. 0-0 zero zero tied score are here in the first quarter. Nobody got on the scoreboard yet. Padgett over set split formation behind him. Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Padgett drop back pass, rolling to his right. Heavy pressure. He's going to turn it up and run himself. He's into the 40, and he's hit inside the 40, around the 37-yard line, dropped right there. Good tackle on the play by Aaron Vermillion of Marion. We could, we've seen the Greyhound come back with a lot of motion, which is something I believe we'll see a lot of this evening. Uh, the Greyhounds working it very well in practice. They used it a lot. So watch the Greyhounds to do a lot of motion, especially using Ritz and Gunderson along with the backs in the backfield. So the Greyhounds bring to the line of scrimmage. 
Taylor and Hansman are in as their wideouts. A lot of motion. Now they both come wide to the left. Right in motion as a tight end. Now he sets on the right side. Pro set behind Paget. Hand off right up the middle to Cole. Fumble on the play, and it is recovered by the Marion Giants on the 30-yard line. Cole did not look like he got the handle on it at all and recovered on the 30-yard line. In getting the recovery that time, Sean Ford, one of the defensive backs in there, getting up the big recovery. So the Greyhounds pick up a fumble. Now they give one back, so it'll be first in town for the Marion Giants. 7.36 left on the clock here in the first quarter. Good ball game. A lot of heavy hitting out there. Two miscues by, one miscue by each team has really cost them. So Marion brings it to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, the wishbone formation. McClure, Carter, and Thompson, the running back. Hand off to McClure, right up the middle. Follow on the play and scramble for the football. No signals yet. It looks as if Marion does have it. Both, both teams battling back and forth. And it is Carmel first and 10 on the 23-yard line. Big recover, Drew McDonald, it appeared to get in there, getting the ball first. So McDonald picks up, I believe that's the first fumble that he has recovered thus far in the season, uh, puts together a good one. So the Greyhounds cause another fumble. McDonald lucky to get in there from a long distance. Uh, that one I believe caused by one of the linebackers. Greyhounds bring it to the line of scrimmage. I have formation behind Padgett, Cole and Sharp are running backs. Gunderson and Harrington are split wide left and right. Tate Ritz is the tight end. Hand off to Sharp right up the middle. He's still running up to the 30 yard, 20 yard line rather. And there's a penalty flag on the play. Gunderson is celebrating. It appears as if there is a penalty against Marion. The run for Sharp was about a four yard line. He got him to the 20 yard line, carrying a lot of Marion Giants along with him. It will be a personal foul against Marion Giants. Looked a little bit of extracurricular activity going on on the sideline. Gunderson celebrating that penalty. So that will be marked off against the Giants from the point at which the ball sharp gained. So that will be another 15, 10 yards from the point the ball was dead. So that's a 10 yard penalty. It, it's one half the distance to the goal line. So they have the ball on the 20, so it's a 10 yard penalty to the 10 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Greyhounds. Two tight ends, full house formation. Four sharp and Cole are the running backs. Quick count, Cole gets the call right up the middle. He's inside the five, down to about the four and a half yard line. Good run by Cole of about five yards. 6.33 left to go in the first quarter. Good ball game on hand here from Marion, Marion High School. Padgett gets the call in from the sideline. Going back to the huddle, King leads him out of the huddle. Second down and three yards to go for the first down. Two tight ends, three backs in the T formation. Cole once again gets the call right up the middle, hits the line of scrimmage, leans forward, gets to about the two-yard line after a short pickup on the gain. The Greyhounds fortunate to have the first down marker shy of the goal line. In this case, though, it doesn't make a lot of difference because it's about an inch difference. So if the Greyhounds get the nose just short of the end zone they're going to get four downs but this third down the biggest they faced in the ball game two tight ends t formation more cole and sharp are the running backs Padgett barking out the signals left and right long count from the greyhounds cole gets the call right up the middle and it is stopped on the goal line he did not get in it is very close although it may be close enough for the first down we will wait and see a big run by cole a big stop in there by the giant defensive line that time right on the line of scrimmage in there was Stotts, Flores, and Crab, Crabby in there very quickly and that is right on the goal line. They will call in the chains for the measurement for the first down. Toby Cole has rushed 15 yards on four carries for the Greyhounds this evening. Padgett wanting them to bring the chains in. This also buys some time for the Greyhounds. They can, they can get some signals from the coaches a little easier, less pressure. It's going to be very close to the first down. And if the Greyhounds get it, that will be a super break. I don't think that this point in the game we'll see Carmel send out the field goal crew for the Greyhounds. They haven't kicked one yet this season. Now we're measuring for the first down. If the Greyhounds are short by about an inch. It appears as if the Greyhounds are going for it. Padgett is staying in the ball game, getting the signs in from the sideline. It is so close. And now the Greyhounds do take a timeout, so during this timeout, we'll take a 60-second booster timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Where you go when you are poor? You eat pizza for. Delicious toppings and incredible sauce. Make no mistake, there's just 
is right next door. Call Pizza King in Carmel for your next pizza or stop by our restaurant at 902 South Range Line Road. Call 848-7994 for a fast free delivery. Pizza King is open at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday for your lunchtime orders. Four eight seven nine nine four for Pizza King Pizza. Welcome back to Marion High School. Carmel Greyhounds on a fourth and very short for the first down. They are right on the goal line. Jim Belden coming back out on the field to talk to the entire offensive squad. Now Pat giving the signals, and Todd King leads them to the line of scrimmage. It is fourth and just a few inches. They are on about the one foot line. It, they could get the first down without scoring a touchdown, but it will be very close. Big fourth down conversion try for the Greyhounds. Two tight ends, T formation. Cole gets a handoff and a touchdown. Greyhounds, Carmel Greyhounds draw first blood. Six points on the board. Toby Cole goes in from about a yard out and the Greyhounds take the lead 6-0. 5-12 left in the first quarter. Greyhounds move it 26 yards on just six plays. Good breaks by the Carmel Greyhounds. And now Mark Lavat, who has hit the last 24 field or er, extra point attempts. He's missed two this season, but he's in to go for number 25. Gunderson in to take the snap. Kick is up and good. So Lavat gets the point after attempt. And he is so far very good late in the season. He has not missed one in quite some time. Seven nothing our score here from Marion High School. Carmel Greyhounds on top first, 5-12 left to go in the first quarter as the Carmel Greyhounds will be kicking off to the Marion Giants. Last time Mark Levitt missed an extra point attempt was against Anderson Highland after a pageant to Ritz. Touchdown pass, 42-yarder. In the game, Levitt kicked four or five extra point attempts. He had five attempts missed one of them. Since then, he has not missed one. Scott Newkirk has missed the only Greyhound extra point attempt since that time. But that makes number 25 for Mark Lovat so far on the season. As we look at Lovat's stats, he's now 36 of 38 with that one. So he is definitely very smooth when kicking the big skin. Mark Lovat set to do the kicking duties for the Greyhounds. Mark Elliott will be setting the kicking team for the Greyhounds, sophomore linebacker, and to do that job. Mark Lovat gets another good kick, this one off to the right side. Thompson comes in, kick it, field it at the 15. He's up at the 25, up to the 30, taking the left side. A lot of speed there over the 40-yard line, out of bounds there, knocked out of bounds by a couple of Greyhound defenders. So the Marion Giants will take over first and 10 on around the 40-yard line of the Marion Giants. The Marion Giants have had two other possessions. Both of them ended with fumbles. This cold night here may have some effect on the ball handling of the Giants. They just haven't been able to hold on to it. So now they bring it to the line of scrimmage here. Again, in over center, the wishbone formation. Thompson, McClure, and Carter are the running backs. Two tight ends in the ball game. Handoff goes to Thomas right up the middle and drop right at the line of scrimmage for no gain on the play. So Thompson... The Greyhound defense stops Thompson on that run. Thompson, who is definitely a very good runner for this Marion Giants team. Quick look at Richie Thompson, 105 carries this season with a 6.5 yard average. So definitely a good runner in Richie Thompson. So Goomery comes out wide to the right. Pro set behind Gennon in McClure and Thompson, one wing back in for the Marion Giants. Handoff goes to Thompson around the right side, and he has dropped for a loss there. A big play on the grounds. In there, Todd Green in getting the first, and along with David Kennedy getting a big hit there for a loss of the yard on the play. Todd Green, a junior, the only junior lineman starting for the Greyhounds defensively. Of course, John Hebert starts offensively, so each line has one junior. Green, who's really become a fast nose guard. Usually you don't see a quick nose guard, but that is exactly what Todd Green is. Now Delgado comes wide to the right, 
and McClure and Thompson remain in the ball game in the split formation. Bannon drops back to pass. He's having heavy pressure. Let's go along the right side. Incomplete. Out of play around the 35-yard line that time. Kept that was complete to a coach on the sidelines. Not an incomplete pass, uh, just incomplete to a eligible player. Uh, one of the coaches caught that one. Pretty good catch received by the Marion Giants coaching staff. Our score now is the Greyhounds on top, 7-0, to 3.44 left to go in the ball game. Now coming in to punt is Scott Rickman of the Marion Giants, the first punt of the ball game. Herman back on his own 30-yard line, ready to receive it, and a terrible kick straight up in the air. That will fall around the 40-yard line. I take a big Marion bounce all the way inside the 30. That will be down on the 25-yard line. In there downing the ball was Matt Johnson. So a short kick in the air, but it got a 37-yard total on a big bounce that time. So the Greyhounds will take over first and 10 inside the 30 at the 25-yard line. Greyhounds coming out to start their third offensive drive. Bill Padgett coming out there to lead the team. Well, Samarian gets a good home country club bounce to move the ball from the to the Greyhound 25-yard line. Watch for the Greyhounds to try to mix it up a little more passing possibly. Greyhounds come in with the I formation, Sharp and Cole are the running backs. Harrington and rather Taylor and Hansman are the wideouts. Padgett gives the ball to Sharp all along the right side. He's to the 30, breaking it to the outside. Drops down around the 35-yard line. That'll be close to a first down on the first and 10 play. Sharp with a big run inside, then cut it back outside and was dropped on the right side for a, about a nine-yard game. That will be very close to the first down, but I don't think he got it. Yes, they will give him the first down. He picked up the full 10 yards that time. So Sharp having a good game, getting some more calls so far in the ball game. So the folks set behind Padgett, that is Cole and Sharp, the running backs. Tooman out wide to the left, single tight end in the ball game. Padgett hands it off right up the middle to Cole. He's to the 40, breaking some tackles up over the 45 to the 40, 45 and a half yard line. That will be good enough for a, that will be close to another Greyhound first down. And it is the Greyhound first down. That is their fourth first down of the ball game. Greyhounds really moving the ball quite well now. They're on top, seven to nothing, 237 left to go in the first quarter. Mike Sharp and Toby Cole, each with 26 yards rushing. Cole, six carries, and Mike Sharp has two. Bring to the line of scrimmage. Padgett over center, eye formation behind him. Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Two men out wide to the left. Those are Taylor and Hansman. His white house to the left. Padgett hands it off right up the middle to Cole. Cole dragging tacklers with him over midfield. Inside Marion territory around the 49-yard line. Good run that time by Cole. Cole getting a lot of calls so far in the year. He does have 131 carries for 801 yards going into the ball game. He has a 6.1 average and 18 touchdowns. Cole getting on the scoreboard quite a bit this year. So Padgett, the quarterback, leads him to the line. The T formation now shift, doing a lot of shifting. Harrington and Gunderson, the wide outs, pro set with Cole and Sharp behind Padgett. Padgett hands it off to Cole once again, right up the middle, over to the 45-yard line of the Marion Giants, just short of the 45-yard line. That'll be close to another first down, but I don't believe he got it. That's the Greyhounds' first second down play of this series. That time, Toby Cole picking up three yards on the down. So far, the Greyhounds have moved the ball 29 yards this series on four plays. Toby Cole now with 35 yards in the ball game off eight carries. So the Greyhounds bring it to the line of scrimmage, showing the T formation on the third and short play. Two tight ends, three men in the backfield, Moore, Sharp, and Cole are the running backs. Hand off goes. It's the bootleg around the left side. Padgett will keep it, turning it up field. He's down to the 40-yard line. He got the first down on a good five-yard pickup by the senior running quarterback. There is a penalty flag on the play right at the spot where the tackle took place. That could That is a face mask against the Marion Giants, so five yards for Bill Padgett, plus a few more yards with a penalty. So now the referee is talking with senior Bill Padgett. It will be a 15-yard penalty against Anderson Island. They have 25 penalties, 25 yards penalized so far here in the first quarter. One minute left to go in the first quarter. Grounds on top, seven to nothing. Good ball game here in the sectional final. That moves the ball down to the Marion 25-yard line. The nose of the ball sitting on the 25, the Greyhounds will have it first and 10. Again, one minute to go. The Greyhounds on top, 7-0, and they're moving the ball very well. 
So Padgett comes to the line of scrimmage once again. Taylor and Hansman wide to the left. Now Hansman moves in motion to the right. Cole and Sharp are Padgett's running backs in the split formation. Cole gets a handoff right up the middle. He's inside the 20, close to the 13-yard line. Padgett appeared to trip coming off the line that time. Cole's able to hang on to it and pick up good yardage that time out inside the 20 to around the 17-yard line, rather. A good seven-yard pickup for the senior running back. Something interesting, some of the players, especially those on offense, the Hawk Hairs, have new jerseys. They ruined some of the jerseys this week earlier, so then new jerseys for the Greyhounds. Split formation behind Padgett, Cole and Sharp, the running backs. Gunder, Gunderson moves in motion to the right. Sharp gets a call right up the middle. He's inside the 10. That'll be good enough for the first down. Tackled down around the seven yard line. Another first down for the Carmel Greyhounds. Big pickup off by that time of 10 yards. So Sharp continues to move the ball for the Greyhounds. They have so far 86 total yards rushing. And Padgett has not attempted to pass the ball yet on this cold night. So they're just using the rushing yards and getting great yardage. So it's first and goal to go inside the 10 yard line. Greyhound showing the T formation, two tight ends, Herman and Ritz in the ball game. Moore, Sharp and Cole are the running backs. And the first quarter ends here from Marion High School. Carmel Greyhounds will switch sides and Carmel Greyhounds will switch sides and have it first and 10 inside the 10. Greyhounds on top, seven to nothing. So in the half, or rather in that first quarter, quickly looking at some of the stats, Bill Padgett rushed the ball 40 yards, Sharp rushed it 35 yards, Toby Cole had 42 yards, and quickly for Marion, six yards for Gunton. Thompson had three yards rushing and 15 yards passing. So the Greyhounds will start it off first and goal to go, starting the second quarter. The Greyhounds on top, seven to nothing. They're really playing excellent football, causing the turnovers on defense, causing two of them already, and that one of those turnovers has resulted in a Greyhound touchdown. First thing goal from the nine-yard line for the Greyhounds. We see both coaches from the respective teams talking to their troops right now, which they can do at the half. What we were saying earlier about the jerseys, they, they match from a distance. They're a little different up close. Uh, some of the numbers are just a tad smaller. Also, they're made of a different material. These, the new jerseys, we see Paget, Cole, Sharp, have some along with some other players for the Greyhounds, but they were ruined when the team managers washed the uniforms last week. So some new look, so to speak, for the Greyhounds. These are actually the same jerseys that IU uses. So uh, definitely top off these now. 12 minutes to go here. We got one full quarter of play in the first half. The Greyhounds on top, 7-0 and threatening. So King, the center, leads him to the line of scrimmage. Padgett over center, two tight ends. T formation with Moore, Cole, and Sharp, the running backs. Padgett barks out the signals left and right. Handoff. He keeps it himself moving around the right side. That'll be touchdown, Greyhounds. Bill Padgett on the bootleg around the right side for the eight-yard scamper into the end zone. Touchdown, Greyhounds. They move on top, 13 to nothing. 11.56 left to go in the second quarter. Only allowed four ticks off the clock in the second quarter before they could punch the ball in. So the Greyhounds take it 65 yards and eight plays plus that 15 yard face masking penalty for the Bill Padgett touchdown run. That one a nine one, nine yard touchdown run. Bill Padgett on the season. That is his fifth touchdown. Mark Lavat now trying to convert 26 in a row. The kick is up and good. So Lavat converts his 26th in a row. Greyhounds on top 14 to nothing here with 11.56 left to go in the first half. Greyhounds playing good ball, getting some big breaks so far in the ball game, but they've been able to capitalize on them. That's a sign of an excellent ball club. Bill Padgett with the first score of his in the ball game. The Greyhounds still yet to have passed the ball, which is something that we've seen the Greyhounds do some opting to keep the ball on the run, establish a firm running game, and then go upstairs with the ball. And that it appears to be what Coach Belden is thinking right now. The Greyhounds have not let the ball get in the air for themselves. They have kept it on the ground now. We see Mark Levitt coming in to kick for the Greyhounds. Back deep to receive is Richie Thompson for the Marion Giants. Now the Greyhounds have jumped on top 14 to zero. It's important for Marion to keep for them right now is to put together a scoring drive of their own because if the Greyhounds stop them, then the momentum is really gonna go with the Greyhounds. So Mike Dell sets the kicking team and Levant gets a good kickoff. This one will make Thompson retreat back to his 10. He's up to the 15 yard line, cutting up field to the 20 inside the 20 to about the 23 yard line. Penalty flag on the play. Flag went up immediately as he was hit. It's 
he brought it back to the 23 yard line, good 13 yard return. Referees are talking it over, over the ball. And it will be a personal foul against the Marion Giants, so that will march them back a few more yards. That really hurts them. That is the third penalty on them on the evening. One of 10, one of 15. And this one will be once again half the distance to the goal line after the personal foul is marked off against the Marion Giants. Now, with 11.50 left to go, your Greyhounds are on top, 14 to zero. Marion with the ball deep in their own territory. They will start from their own 12 yard line. So the Greyhounds now looking to establish a good defense. The, the only time the Greyhounds have gotten the ball besides making Marion go one, two, three punt when the first two times the Greyhounds got the ball off of fumbles, they need to continue that great play. So the Marion Giants come in, quick pitch outside to Thompson around the left side, and he is stopped, hit on the line of scrimmage around the left side. He was able to lean forward for a couple of yards. He's out to the 14 after a good two-yard pickup. Heavy pursuit there by the Grands. A lot of linemen in there. Malinchuk, Green, McDonald in there on the stop, along with Kaufman in there getting a piece of him. So 11-19 left to go in the second quarter. 14 to nothing our score. Carmel Grounds on top. Marion Giants bring it to the line of scrimmage. The wisp, rather the split formation behind. Again, and quick snap once again goes right up the middle to Thompson, and he picks up maybe a half a yard on the carry. He's up close to the 15-yard line on the short gain. You see Drew McDonald picking up Thompson quick. Drew checks out now, and they bring in Vaughn. They're expecting a trap play by the Giants of Marion. In practice yesterday, they said they're going to take out McDonald because he doesn't move and pick up the trap well enough. He can pick up a pass well and a basic run, but on the trap play, Drew has had some problems lately, and they bring in Brian Vaughn for the three batter set. So the Giants bring it to the line of scrimmage. They have the pro set behind him. Thompson and McClure are the running backs. One wing back, that is Burke, and there's a penalty flag on the play. That could be a delay of game, game call, and that's what it is. Bell marching back a few more yards on this third down play. It was third down at about seven yards for the first down. Now that'll march him back to the 10 yard line. So that will be third down and about 12 yards for the first down. So that hurts them just a bit. That five yard penalty is marked off. They have 42 yards penalized here in the first half. 10-23 left to go. 14 nothing. our score. Greyhounds on top. Ginnon brings it to the line of scrimmage. I formation, McClure and Thompson are the running backs. Ginnon drops back to pass, swings it out to McClure on the right side. He's up to the 10 and hit right there and dropped at the 12-yard line. Trent Decatur in there on the play. There is a penalty flag on the play. We will check to see what it is. And it is against the Carmel Greyhounds. So on the short pickup, but there was a penalty on the play on the Carmel Greyhounds. That will march the ball upfield just a little bit more. The Greyhound lineman coming in on the left hand side stopped that one that penalty possibly going against again a great lineman for the rushing or rather roughing of the passer now we're going to have to wait and see what marion's going to do they're going to move it from where the ball is now plus the penalty going to move that one long distance now across the 20 now to the 25 yard line so they pick up their first down since the first play of the ball game so that's a big penalty against the Carmel Greyhounds. That is the third first down for the Marion Giants. Ginnon leads him to the line of scrimmage. The wishbone formation behind him, McClure, Carter, and Thompson are the running backs behind him. One man out wide to the right. That is Goomery. Ginnon mark, barks out signals left and right. A lot of motion in the Carmel Greyhound defense. Pitch back goes to Tom Carter. Carter fumbles the ball there. It's down, it's loose at the 40 yard line and it looks like it is recovered there by Thompson on the Marion Giants. What a break that time. Carter appears as if he hit with his knee and it just got by everyone jumping all the way out to the 44 yard line. They will pick up the first down on that play. Very unusual, Carter just didn't get a handle on it and just kicked the ball by everyone that time. So first and 10 for the Marion Giants. Kind of play like that really hurts the Greyhounds. That really kind of can take away some momentum. Now Marion with a lot of momentum coming to the line. 9.54 left to go in the first half. First and 10 for the Giants. Which going formation McClure and Carter and Thompson are the running backs. Quick swing pass around the left side. 
Great side to Delgado. He's up to midfield around the 50-yard line. Uh, Pickup of about six yards on the play. Delgado, one of the wide receivers on the team. He also plays running back for this Aaron Giants team. Comes in with the reception there. About six yards on the play. That is, so far, Ginnon has gone two for three in the ball game. Passing with about 21 yards in the air. So Ginnon coming out playing well. He, they haven't gone to the air that much. They've primarily stayed on the ground, though. Wishbone, wishbone formation once again. McClure, Carter, Thompson, the running back. Ginnon drops back a pass, swings it out to Thompson at the 45-yard line, and he is dropped right there. A loss on the play of about four yard lines. Josh Malinchuk in there on the tackle, along with him, David Kennedy in there quickly to stop that short little screen pass by the Marion Giants. The Greyhound defense really tightening up. They're catching that pass good. We're seeing the Greyhounds using shifting a lot on the defense, and the Greyhound linebacking crew is really playing tough. Giants bring it to the line of scrimmage. This is a long third down play, third and about nine, just over the 45-yard line. Denon dropped back to pass, looking downfield, dumps it off to Thompson at the 50-yard line, struggling for the first down. It does not look like he got the first down. He's inside the 50, around the 46 and a half yard line. Trent Decatur coming from behind to bring him down, holding him from getting the line, getting the first down. It will be fourth down and short of about a yard, and it, they will, Marion will be bringing in the punting unit. Coming in to do the punting chores is Scott Rickman. Scott Rickman has had one other punt in the ball game that a 37-yarder didn't get much. He got a lot of height on it, and then it took a big bounce for him. So Herman now back on his 15-yard line about a 17-yard line set to return the punt. This, it's a fake punt, it's a short snap. He's running upfield, that will be good enough for a first down. He's at the 45-yard line of the Carmel Grounds. That is the second fake punt we've seen in the last two weeks. Both of them have been successful on the ground, so that really hurts the grounds there as they pull the fake punt beautifully. That time they're carrying the football for Marion Giants. It was Mike Krabby on the fake punt. One of the back men just picked off the snap and ran it for the first down. First and 10 for the Marion Giants. Kinnon over center eye formation behind McClure and Thompson are the running backs. Penalty flag on the play before the ball was snapped. It appears that it will be a legal procedure against the Marion Giants. And they will mark them back a few more yards there on the call. Well, this drive has been anything. It's been exciting, Cap. So far, take, reviewing the drive quickly, the Greyhounds had it third down and 15 at one, or excuse me, third and 14, and then dropped the passer after a, about a three yard conversion. That moved the ball 10 yards, then a fumble, which went, the fumble actually was 11 yards, but it was a 19 pickup on, 19 yard pickup on the play, and now it's first and 15. So first down, 15 yards for the first down. I formation with McClure and Thompson behind Ginnon. Thompson gets the call right up the middle. He's to the 45-yard line, a five-yard pickup up to the original line of scrimmage before the penalty. It'll be second and 10 for the Marion Giants. The Greyhounds now have to start working on finding the Marion running backs a little quicker. They can't continue to let Thompson along with Carter continue to pick up those five-yard runs every time they Rush, or that's when the Greyhounds could get hurt. Gennon takes him to the line. I formation, McClure and Thompson. It's the fake draw, and Gennon's gonna keep it right up the middle. Got running room over to the 40, the 35 yard line where he's dropped there. He will be very close to a first down. Interesting play there. They fake the draw play to Thompson, then Gennon just kept it and ran it right up the middle of the field. That will not be good enough for a fourth first down. That will be third and short. Hartman checking out of the ball game. Summary checking in for him. Todd Green on the grounds checking out. So it's third and short. Big play here for the Marion Giants. They have the pro set. McClure and Thompson are the running backs. One flanker back off to the right. Gannon barks out the signals. He's going to keep it. Run it up himself. He's inside the 35-yard line. He is very close to the first down. First indications look like he did get it. He's around the, and that will be first and 10 for the Marion Giants on the one, two-yard pickup by the quarterback in it. So far in this drive, Marion has moved the ball 51 yards. They've chewed up over an hour, excuse me, five minutes on the clock, six minutes now left to go in the first half. This drive started at the 11.50 mark. 
First and 10 from the 34 yard line. Quick count, the pitch back to Thompson around the left side. Penalty flag on the play over the 35 to the 33 yard line. Short gain on the play of about two yards. Time has been stopped and it will be a legal procedure against the Marion Giants. There'll be another five yard penalty against them. They have 52 yards penalized so far here in the first half. 547 left to go. Greyhounds on top of the Giants, 14 to nothing. Greyhounds have not been, have been penalized once for 15 yards. So they have held their penalties to a minimum. Marion Giants have 52 yards penalized so far. Giants bring it to the line of scrimmage. It'll be first and 10. Pro set behind Gennon, McClure, and Thompson are the running backs. Burke is moving in motion to the left side. Gennon drops back to pass. Throws it off to the right side to McClure. Complete. He's inside the 35, close to the 30. He'll be marked there on a good play, about a 10-yard pass play from Gennon to McClure out of the backfield. Gennon is four of five so far in the ballgame with 26 yards passing, 26 yards in the air, rather having 34 yards in the air. So a good play that time. Second down, six yards to go for the first down. Another big play here for the Marion Giants. They're showing the wishbone formation. McClure, Carter, and Thompson. Quick snap. Ginnon's going to take it around the right side, left side rather. Now he's cutting it back to the right. Fumble on the play, and he falls on it on the 36-yard line. Once again, he was not able to hang on to the ball. He was cutting it back to the right side. Lost the ball, fell on it. So it'll be third down and 11 yards to go for the first down. That wasn't as much as him losing the ball, Cap, but that was David Kennedy getting a handle on it. He almost stripped it right away. He knocked it right out of the hands of the young quarterback. So third down, 12 yards to go for the first down. Gannon over center. McClure and Thompson are the running backs. Burke split wide to the right. Gannon drops back to pass. Looking downfield, a lot of pressure. He gets, gets it away. Incomplete. Tip that time by Trent Decatur, number 44, the inside linebacker for the Greyhounds pass was incomplete so it'll be fourth down and 12 yards for the first down i don't think we're going to see a fake here this time that'd be definitely a long fake to try because they don't want to get they want to give carmel as bad a field position off of even a normal punt the one that's not good that will move the ball down to about the 10 yard line mary takes a timeout which gives us time to take one you're listening to the voice of the greyhounds <laughs> Financial services and sound advice only at Indiana National. Welcome back to Marion High School. They on fourth down and 12 yards. The Marion Giants are going to go for it. Gannon drops back to pass, looking downfield. Heavy pressure put on by the ground. Try from behind. He will be dropped right there. First in there was Josh Malinchuk, the right defensive end, getting in there very quickly. Todd Green was also in on the tackle, dropping him for a loss of about two yards on the play. It'll be first and 10 for the Carmel Greyhounds as Marion went for it on fourth down. I'm sure head coach Mayor Davis said, you know, well, we're gonna give Carmel the ball. You know, if we miss it, we're gonna put him at about the 30 yard line. The Greyhounds drop him for a sack, drop Gannon for a sack. Now the ball sits on the Marion or er, 38 yard line. So first and 10 for the Greyhounds, patch over center, split formation behind him. Cole and Sharp are his running back. Badge barks out the signals left and right. Drops back to pass, fake hand off, rolling to his left, looking downfield. It is incomplete to Hansman, was the intended receiver at the 50 yard line. He was wide open, the pass was a little bit overthrown off Hansman's fingertips. So the Greyhounds will start over again, second down, 10 yards to go. Balls marked on around the 33 yard line of Carmel. 3.48 left to go in the first half. Greyhounds on top, 14 to nothing in the sectional final. 
again. So the winner of this ball game will take on the winner of Penn and Fort Wayne Snyder. Something to keep in mind as the game will progress. Paget sets up over center, a lot of motion once again. Now Ritz and Gunderson split wide to the right, Harrington wide left. The draw play, Gunderson rather sharp, right up the middle. He's tripped up, but he continues running over midfield inside the 50-yard line to the 46-yard line. Great run that time by Sharp. He was tripped up at the line of scrimmage, kept his balance, kept his motion going forward, got enough for the first down inside the 50-yard line to about the 47. Mike Sharp back into the form. We saw him at the beginning of the season before a back entry set him out really running well this evening in the ball game. Padgett over center, more motion for the Greyhounds. Taylor and Hansman wide to the right. Split formation behind Padgett, Cole and Sharp. Cole gets the call over the left side. He's inside 45 to the 40, about the 41 yard line, a six yard pickup on the play. Good run by Cole, good quickness shown that time, getting outside quickly. 3.14 left to go in the first half. 14 nothing our score from Marion High School. Carmel Greyhound on top, sectional final. So after about the six yard pickup for the Greyhounds, Paget leads him to the line. I formation behind him, Cole and Sharp are his running backs. Two men out wide to the right, those are Gunderson and Harrington as wide outs. Paget hands off to Sharp right up the middle, he's inside the 40 to about the 48 yard line. It'll be third down and about two yards for the first down. Sharp tripped on a Greyhound lineman that time as he only was able to pick up about three yards on the play. Otherwise, Mike could have had a lot of open room. You know something, we see that Mike Sharp and Toby Cole now. Sharp's carried the ball four times, or excuse me, five times for 53 yards. Cole's took it 10 times and 47. But it seems that when they start running better, they're competing against each other. So the Greyhounds take it to the line, handsmen and Taylor split wide left and right. I formation behind Paget. Paget gives the ball off to Sharp. He's struggling hard. Gets the first down inside the 35. He is down around the 33 yard line. First down for the ground. Eight so far for the grounds in the ball game. After a good pickup of about five yards on the play that time. Six yards rather. Good effort that time from Cole. From Sharp rather. So it'll be first and 10. Just over two minutes of play. And there's a timeout on the field that is an injury timeout. So Carmel from Carmel Marion High School will take a 60 second booster timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. <laughs> King Pizza is right next door. Call Pizza King in Carmel for your next pizza or stop by our restaurant at 902 South Range Line Road. Call 848-7994 for our fast free delivery. Pizza King is open at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday for your lunchtime orders. That makes us Four eight seven nine nine four for Pizza King Pizza. Formation behind Paget Colin Sharp. Paget drops back to pass. Quick slant over the middle. That is complete to Ritz. Fumble on the play inside the 20-yard line. Recovered by the Marion Giants at the 13-yard line. Ritz, the senior tight end, completed the pass. First pass completion from Paget on the night. Then he turned around and was hit hard and the ball pop loose inside the 20, so it'll be first and 10 for the Marion Giants on their 13-yard line. A minute 45 left to go in the first half. 14-0 our score, Carmel Greyhounds on top. Sectional final here for Marion High School. Well, another fumble plagues the teams, and now Marion starts with 142 left to go in the first half. High formation behind Ginnon, McClure, and Thompson, the running back. Thompson gets a pitch back around the left side. Now breaks it farther to the outside, tracked from behind. Great play that time. Crosby, the right cornerback, dragged him from behind, dropped him for a loss that time of about three yards. Dropped, dropped him on the 15-yard line. We see Crosby coming in, of course, because they had to make a shift. They had to send Spidell to the safety slot, the strong safety slot, because of the Tony Mefford injury at Crosby there, showing that maybe he can play the cornerback position very well. 
I formation behind Ginnon. McClure and Thompson remain in the ball game. Thompson gets pitch back. Now the reverse around the right side to Delgado. He turns it upfield and big hit that time. Mark Lovat hit him on the 12-yard line, knocked up, ended him that time, and dropped him for a loss of a couple yards that time. Great time by Lovat. He was being blocked and still was able to get a piece on him. There is a timeout on the field, but we will keep it here as with 42 seconds left to go in the first half. Lovat, a 5'9", 152-pound senior cornerback. He's the smallest player on the defense for the Greyhounds, but provides one of the biggest punches. Lovat, that time, not making a big knock, hit the man, and f made him fly back about three yards on the play. Lovat, again, very strong, very talented. Probably one of the more talented players on the Greyhound team. He can kick it, but also an interesting point that they were having at the beginning of the season, Mark LeClock was the only person that could really snap the ball well for kickoffs and field goals. They had to train somebody because Lavat, that was one of his specialties. Uh, Lavat getting a lot of extra work, working with some professionals down at, with the, the Indianapolis Colts. His dad, one of the coordinators for the Colts. So Lavat, uh, definitely one of the better talented football players on this ground team and also a very proficient baseball player. So it'll be a long third down play for the Marion Giants when the timeout is over. It'll be third and about 15 for the Giants. 42 seconds left to go in the half. Greyhounds on top, 14 to nothing. Great game. Greyhounds came out early, causing a couple of fumbles on the Marion Giants. They have also lost a couple themselves. So it's been back and forth all game. Greyhounds have gotten the better of the Giants, 14 nothing so far. One back offense behind Ginnon. Ginnon drops back to pass. Now the draw play to Thompson right up the middle. He's dropped on the 15-yard line. A pickup of about two yards on the play. And they will take another timeout. Carmel taking a timeout this time. Hoping that with a fourth down play, they will have some time maybe to put some more points on the board if they get the ball. If you remember last week, Cap Ron Herman, of course not no relation to Ryan Herman, but Ron ran back a punt for a touchdown, only to have the punt nullified and sent back on a clipping call. He actually started the run about at his own 33-yard line, took it 68 yards for the touchdown, but they had to send it back to the 18-yard line on the clip. This time, Herman doesn't have as much room to cover, not a lot of real estate starting. He's going to stand about, his, about the Marion 47-yard line. We see some of the players now look very cold down on that field. Herman, who just comes into the game jumping up and down, blowing into his hands, so it has dropped considerably temperature-wise out on the football field in this evening's ball game. Kind of a chilly night, the first really cold night the Greyhounds have had to play in. If you remember a little earlier in the season, there was a cold night where we had even a few snow flurries. The Greyhounds are fortunate enough to pull the Hoosier Dome draw for that game. So this is one of the Greyhounds' first experiences in the cold. Of course, a lot of practice in the cold, but they have not seen the cold in a game situation, which could make somewhat of a difference. 33 seconds now left to go in the first half. The Greyhounds on top, 14 to zero. Mark Levat going back to about his own, or about the Marion 46 yard line to receive this punt. So Rickman, Rickman will be punting from his own goal line. Herman back on his 45 yard line with 33 seconds left to go in the half. Rickman getting a snap, almost blocked that time by Trent Decatur, another short kick, calling for the fair cut that time was Spidell inside the 30 yard line, around the 29 yard line. So another short punt that time by Rickman. That one only a 14 yard punt. Narrowly missed blocking that time was Trent Decatur in there very close. So 27 seconds left for the Carmel Grounds to do something with the football. First and 10 for the Grounds inside the 30, around the 29-yard line of the Marion Giants. Agit, the senior quarterback, brings him to the line. Timeout on the field. The umpire is calling the timeout quickly there, discussing some things. They are, it's a time situation kept. They're worried about the time clock, trying to get the time clock set. They want the clock set at 27. It now reads 23 seconds. Because on a fair catch, you do not start the clock until after, or until, you don't start it until the ball is touched. But on that fair catch, they don't start it. So the clock's got to go all the way back to the 27 second mark as they wind down the clock now, down to about the five-second mark, still counting. So it's 
going to just give each team a little more time to get cold and think of more plays. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have a different form of halftime interview than what you're used to. We're going to have Chuck, Mr. Chuck Keppen, cross-country coach, but this is going to halftime interview was taped last evening on Sports Edge. Uh, we're going to play an excerpt from that, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Remember, you can catch Sports Edge Thursday nights at 6 o'clock live on WHJE and CHTV, the only live show carried on both of those uh, two stations simultaneously from Carmel High School. Next week's show promises to be very special. We're going to have Coach Belden and Coach Hetty of the basketball team. So as the seasons start to shift, all the teams in their season finale, so to speak. The cross-country teams have their state finals tomorrow at South Grove Golf Course starting at 11 o'clock. So uh, if you have nothing to do, be sure to go out and check out the cross-country teams. Both boys and girls will be competing. The girls highly favored, and the boys are right in the middle of a big dog fight. So the clock has now been set at 27 seconds, and now the umpires are stopping it. The referees are stopping the game once again. Not sure of what it is. And now it looks like they're ready to play. The ground showing the two tight end in two tight end formation. Ritz and Herman are the tight ends. Cole and Sharp are the running backs in the pro set formation. Patrick Parks has the signals. He drops back the pass, rolling to his left, avoiding the pressure from the backside. He lets it loose into the end zone. It is incomplete. Nobody was there, nearly intercepted. The closest Carmel man to that was Adam Ritz. He was about on the five-yard line. John Hebert made a heck of a block for Bill Padgett. Probably gave, probably made sure Bill didn't lose about six yards on the play and gave him a lot more time. I don't think Bill was aware of the block. Something interesting, we see both Jim Pesic and John Hebert have their shirts tied and tails in the back, kind of a team unity thing they started in practice this week. Padgett now in the shotgun formation. Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Harrington and Gunderson are his wideouts left and right. Padgett draws back to pass, looking downfield on the right side. It is incomplete, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Eric Gunderson, inside the 10 and around the seven yard line. That ball was tipped by American Giant before it got to Gunderson. Now we see Jeff Taylor check into the ball game for the Greyhounds. Also, Jason Hansman comes in with the play. Hansman, we see, always brings in the play. Taylor comes immediately out. Hansman gets a few last words from Coach Belton. Now it's third and 10 from the Marion 29. Hansman comes wide to the right. Taylor out wide to the left. Split formation behind Padgett and Cole and Sharp. Padgett drops back to pass, looking downfield. Pumps fakes going to the end zone. It is incomplete out of the reach of Jeff Taylor. He was in the end zone. It was a little bit overthrown. Ten seconds remaining on the clock. It'll be a fourth and ten call for the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds will go for it. Cat had been reaching for the end zone on each of these. Wouldn't surprise me to see Toby Cole or Mike Sharp get a quick pass if they don't go into the end zone. Now they're bringing in Gunderson and Harrington, so we could see the Greyhounds definitely go upstairs. This is their top receiving crew out on the field right now. So Gunderson comes wide to the right, Harrington wide to the left. Cole and Sharp are the running backs in the split formation. Patrick drops back in the shotgun formation. He drops back to pass, looking downfield, looking in Harrington's rations on the left side. It is up for grabs and incomplete in and out of the hands of Harrington. He went up with the cornerback that time, and neither of them was able to come down with it. The cornerback, Kevin Jump, the junior defensive back on the right side, incomplete. Three seconds remaining on the clock. With, that was a fourth down play, so Marion will take over first and 10 with three seconds left on the clock. Carmel Grant defense comes in the ball game. So the Greyhounds waste four downs there, but they, I think they just wanted to do what they could. A timeout taken on the field. I believe we'll just keep it here with just three seconds to go. Time for one play. We see Coach Mayor David running in with quarterback Steve Ginyan to talk to his crew. We see Coach Fiedler of the Greyhounds talking to his defensive troops. One thing also that we uh, forgot to mention, kept the Carmel High School band made a trip up to Marion this evening uh, as they performed the they com performed the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning. We've heard them do the school song some for the, the team. We will see Marion's band at halftime, but both bands uh, out here this evening 
actually that's probably a bulk of the Greyhound crowd, but it's good that the band will come down. I'm sure those mouthpieces though on the horns are a little cold this evening as it is a very chilly evening here from Marion, Indiana, where the Greyhounds are on top, 14 to zero, three seconds left to go in this first half. First and 10 for the Marion Giants, Ginnon over center with three seconds left. He drops back to pass, rolling a little bit to his right, throws it downfield, it is complete and a lateral on the right side, and it was, he was continuing to run. He's inside the 40, that tackled at the 35 yard line. Pass was complete to Jimmy Burke, the wide receiver, as soon as he caught the ball, he lateraled the ball back to number 26, Thompson, and Thompson went down there very quickly, and he almost broke it. The safety back there saved the touchdown, slowing him down, and a lot of grounds came back from behind to bring him down. I don't think they were ready for that. Excellent lateral by Jimmy Burke. Perfect play, perfectly executed, and it almost worked, almost took it the whole way. That would have been a, the longest touchdown we've seen scored against us from scrimmage. We'll be back after this timeout for a halftime interview with Mr. Chuck Keppen, which was taped last evening on Sports Edge. We'll have a small excerpt from that, plus all the statistics coming your way at halftime. But after this 60-second booster timeout, you're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. of financial services and sound advice. Only at Indiana National. Good evening and welcome to Sports Edge. I'm your host, Nancy Gang, and joining us for the first portion of the show, boys and girls head cross-country coach, Mr. Chuck Keppen. Thanks a lot for coming by, Mr. Keppen. Thanks for having me, Nancy. How are you doing today? Pretty good, thanks. Well, big move coming up here pretty soon. Uh, something part of the season that Carmel Ground run a really savor sport that's the state championship meet which is coming up Saturday. Yeah, Saturday at the Blue Golf Course in Indianapolis. Uh, girls run 11, boys run 11.30. And uh, we've been working for a long time toward this, uh, way back as far as the uh, early part in July, actually. And uh, the kids have worked hard. And uh, of course, the girls have won it three years in a row. And uh, this is the last year for a lot of our good senior girls. And our boys team has been nothing short of remarkable the progress they've made since the beginning of the season. So we're both, uh, both teams are really looking forward to it. You know, you have a unique situation having both boys and girls and having them at the same season, the same time. What extra responsibilities does that mean for you? Well, I, when I first started coaching the girls, when I started back in 81, I, I made up my mind if I was going to be coach of the girls, I was going to do everything for the girls that I did for the boys. So it really pretty much doubled responsibility somewhat, although we do pretty much run at the same time, the workouts are similar and so on, but there's a lot of little things that I had always done for the boys that now I also do for the girls, so it pretty much doubled the load, but it's been kind of a labor of love because the girls have always been a very easy group to work with, very coachable and so on, so it's been a joy. Break, we'll break this season down for boys and girls. First off, for the boys, you really didn't expect maybe some of the things you've seen from this year. They've really improved great. Yeah, um, our goal at the start of the season was to try to make it to the state meet. In other words, finish in the top four teams of the semi-state. And um, you know, here we are, winners of the semi-state, and actually one of the favored teams going to the state meet. 
And uh, you know, four months ago, I never would have dreamed that we would be one of the top teams in the state. And I was interviewed at that time by some papers in the northern part of the state, and I told them, I said, hey, this is not one of the years like we've had the last uh, 10 years or so. Well, we're going to be like the first or second team in the state. But our young kids have really progressed throughout the season and come on strong. And I think the, the best part about these kids is their attitude. They've had a great attitude. They've worked hard, and they've really been a pleasure to work with. Now that they've improved so much, you're really looking ahead. For Saturday, you're thinking, you know, wow, we would have been happy with maybe a top five finish or even getting there. But now you're trying to look a little bit toward winning it. You know, I told these kids the other day, I want them to still feel good about themselves in the season we had, even if they are, let's say, somewhere in the top five and not first or second or whatever, because it has been a great season. But you're right, we are one of the favorite teams. Uh, we're ranked second in the state right now behind Portage, and from what we've seen the results, uh, I think that our team can run with Portage. And I think we've got the ideal team to get the job done. We've got Mike Toll, who's kind of leading the way, and he should be up toward the front of the pack Saturday. And then we've got four Four other kids, great kids that have run together all season long. And I think if they can run together and work with each other throughout the race on Saturday, I really think we have an excellent shot to win. What kind of depth do you have on this boys team? Well, to be real honest and not to take away anything from the other kids on the team, we're about five deep. We've got five kids that can really get the job done, and after that, we're not quite as strong as a lot of the teams that we beat. Um, our sixth and seventh position aren't nearly as strong as some of those teams uh, that have finished behind us in a lot of these meets, uh, uh, and that's somewhat unfortunate because it'd be nice to have a good backup like your sixth man. If, it, if something happened to one of your top five guys, it'd be nice to have somebody that could step in there and take over for one of those top five, but um, we haven't had that all season long. You're taking your phone calls at 846-7728 for your, your calls uh, for Coach Kepin. A few minutes we'll have Coach Belden in to you, where he will field your calls. Now the girls team has really been strong. You've had great seasons the last three years. You mentioned they've won the last three. The senior class is going for four. What's it been like working with these girls for the last four years? Well, two of my seniors, I think, really deserve a lot of the credit. That'd be Susie Stewart and Jenny Clem. And, uh, I think they've had a lot to do with our program being as successful as it's been, and we'll certainly uh, be at a loss when those girls graduate. Um, and it's really been fun uh, for the most part down through the years working with those girls, and um, they've really achieved some remarkable things. You know, they've, they've lost one since they've been in high school, and that was the Pike Holcomb Karen when they were freshmen, and uh, that is not even a true cross country meet. And uh, in that particular meet, uh, the team that beat them didn't even make it to the state meet that year, and the team that finished second in that meet uh, finished like third in the state. We were third in that meet and won the state with 64 points, and second place team had 114 points. So it just tells you how much those girls came along throughout the season, and they've done the same thing throughout their high school career. And we, had, we were fortunate enough to have an article in the paper this morning in the Star, and it said some things in there that might have sounded a little cocky, maybe on my part and maybe on some of the girls' part, but we were just kind of, you know, told it like it was, kind of no brag, just fact. And these girls have just accomplished so many things, and they are somewhat in the league of their own. And I think they deserve to be talked about that way because they have worked so hard to be as good as they are. And uh, we go against teams that are rated uh, second, third, or fourth in the state. And most times we'll put our top five girls in front of the first girl. So it's just a remarkable group of girls. You know, people sometimes say cross country, yeah, maybe it's a great high school sport, but they don't, they don't realize that they're getting scholarships for cross country. And this year you have a couple that they're being really looked at, boys and girls, by a lot of schools. You know, what do you tell your kids, you know, hey, you can go and do something with this as you go to school? Yeah, with Title IX, uh, you know, people like Susie Stewart and maybe Jenny Clem and, and some of the girls that are underclassmen certainly have a, a great opportunity to go into college with a, maybe even a full scholarship. So that's, that's kind of a motivator right there. And, um, I'm not sure if that's what's really made these girls get out there and run, but I think it's going to be something that's going to be kind of nice in the future that's going to kind of help pay off all the efforts they've made. Your boys team is a very young one this year, as we've mentioned. What does that give you on hopes? toward the future? Well, I don't look ahead too much, you know. Uh, 
because we've got this big meet Saturday, but I have throughout the season thought about, hey, after Mike Toll graduates this year, we're still going to have most of our kids back. We've got some good young kids in the junior high coming up and, you know, some kids that aren't quite in our top seven now here at the high school that are running like uh, ninth man, tenth man, eleventh man, while those kids are like sophomores. So the, I think the future is bright, and I think the best thing about the whole thing is the attitude of these kids. It's something a little bit new. It's kind of refreshing because it's such good kids, and they're really into running, and they've done a great job for us. Coach, well, good luck tomorrow or Saturday, and hope to bring home another Greyhound cross-country title, hopefully two of them picking up the 29th and 30th state titles at Carmel High School. Well, I want to thank you for having me on here, Yancey, and I want to remind the viewers out there that it is Saturday at South Grove Golf Course down in Indianapolis. It's about a block north of Bush Stadium, and the girls are running 11, the boys are running 11.30. Thanks, Thanks once again for coming by, Mr. Cabin, and good luck to you and your teams tomorrow. We'll be back after this timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. Pizza King Pizza is right next door. Call Pizza King in Carmel for your next pizza or stop by our restaurant at 902 South Range Line Road. Call 848-7994 for our fast free delivery. Pizza King is open at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday for your lunchtime orders. That makes us good to the very end. Pizza King Pizza, Pizza King Pizza. We make it good to the very end. Pizza King Pizza, good to the very end. That's 848-7994 for Pizza King Pizza. Welcome back to Marion High School. Yancey Deering along with Kep Carmichael where the Greyhounds are on top. 14-0. Remember, they will receive the ball because they did defer the toss at the beginning of the game. Kep, do you have some team statistics for us? I uh, sure do, Yancey. Starting off with the Carmel High School Greyhounds their team statistics, they had nine first downs in the first half. They had an incredible 225 yards rushing in the first half. That split equally between Cole, Sharp, and Padgett had a couple of runs in there, including a touchdown. Yards passing, Padgett was only one for six so far in the first half. That was a 12-yard reception to Adam Ritz inside the 20-yard line. They had two fumbles in the ball game. Both those in the half, both those fumbles were recovered by Marion Giants. They were penalized one time for 15 yards. The Marion Giants had seven first downs in the ball game, in the half rather. They had 56 yards rushing and 49 yards passing, so equally split between rushing and passing that time. They did run many more times than they did pass, but they had some big games in passing. The quarterback Ginnon for the Marion Giants was five of seven in the ball game so far with no interceptions. The Marion Giants did fumble the ball three times. Two of them were recovered by Greyhounds and one of those fumbles resulted in a Carmel Greyhound score. They, had, they punted the ball twice. Rickman had two punts, one of 37 and one of 14 on uh, average there of around 25 yards on a punt and penalty, penalty yards really hurt Marion. They were penalized six times for a total of 52 yards. That hurt them very much. Looking over the scoring for in the ball game, scoring broke off at the 5-12 mark in the first quarter. Toby Cole broke the ice with a one-yard run, capping a 26-yard six-play drive. The point after from Levi was good, and the score at this point was 7-0. With 11.56 left to go in the second quarter, just a couple ticks off the clock in the second quarter. An eight-yard run from Padgett capped an eight-play, 75-yard drive. The point after, once again, by Lovat was good, and our score was 14 to nothing. Quickly looking over some of the individual statistics, the leading rusher for the Greyhounds, Mike Sharp, has 59 yards and six carries. Toby Cole has took the pigskin 10 times for 47 yards, and Bill Padgett, the only other Greyhound to make a rush besides Kohler Sharp, he's rushed it four times for 29 yards. The Greyhounds have yet to complete a pass. The Marion Giants, it is for its quarterback Steve Ginyan 
has rushed it nine times off six carries. Running back Robert Carter has eight carries off one yard. Richie Thompson, the leading rusher, has 25 yards off eight carries. Remember, that, that includes that 16-yarder after the lateral on the last play. And then a the player who, and then Craig, number 48, Doug, or excuse me, Krabby, had one carry for two yards in the passing. They have completed more passes, of course, than the Greyhounds. One that went to Burke for 15 yards. They had two passes to Thompson. One of them was for a loss. So overall, after off of two carries, he has 13 yards in the passing category. McClure with eight yards, and Delgado received one pass for six. A key here for the Greyhounds, they need to have a big possession. If you go bang, bang, punt, in the words of Jim Belden, and Marion puts on a score, that is going to hurt the Greyhounds because that makes the score 14-7, and that equals a different ball game. The Greyhounds will receive because they did defer the coin toss at the beginning of the football game, so the Greyhounds need a big possession to start off this second half. We'll be back for the second half action after this 60-second booster timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. is right next door. Call Pizza King in Carmel for your next pizza or stop by our restaurant at 902 South Range Line Road. Call 848-7994 for our fast free delivery. Pizza King is open at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday for your lunchtime orders. That makes us Seven nine nine four for Pizza King Pizza. Welcome back to Marion High School. Yancey Deering and Kep Carmichael bringing you the action. The captains down on the field for both teams for Marion. Again, the captains are Chad Royer, also another captain, Aaron Kennedy for the Greyhounds. Of course, Paget and Ritz talking with the referees. Second half, getting ready to start under play. The team meets as a whole, ready for a breakdown. The offense again will be on the field for the Greyhounds first as they receive. We see Coach Jim Belden having a few words with one of the referees. As they're gonna continue talking now as uh, Coach Belden makes his way to the sidelines. We've seen a lot of penalties going against Mary and they've been penalized 52 yards in the ball game. Now that I'm sure a stat that Coach Mayor David is not happy about of his Marion Giants. Marion playing probably in one of the toughest conferences in the state and the probably one with the best tradition winning in every sport and that's the north central conference we just heard uh 
Coach P.T. Bailey of Anderson talking, and he said that Marion needs to come out and control the game. I think that's what they're looking for. Andy Geyer has the opening kickoff. It's an onside kick recovered by the Greyhounds inside the 50-yard line. Recovering that kickoff was offensive lineman Greg Bowen. Good heads-up play, recovering it and falling on the ball on the 47-yard line. Onside kick from the kicker, Geyer. And heads up play by the Greyhounds, recovered it, so it'll be first and 10 for the Greyhounds on the 47-yard line. Harrington checks out of the ball game as Gunderson and Herman, Herman and Ritz are the tight ends, two tight end formation. Gunderson split wide to the left. Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Padgett barks out the signals. Long count from the Greyhounds here. Badge hands it off to Cole, the first man through, breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage. He has close to a first down inside the 45-yard line of the Marion Giants. He has dropped it around the 42-yard line. That hole opened wide open from Cole. He did break a few tackles there at the line of scrimmage and broke it for a big game. They are taking an official timeout here, most likely to call in the change to see if he did get the first down. It will be very close. That front line for the Greyhounds doing an excellent job all evening long for the Greyhounds from left to right, of course. It goes junior John Hebert at left tackle in the left guard for the Greyhounds, Greg Bowen, center Todd King, Mark Towner is the right guard, the right tackle, Jim Pesic for the Greyhounds, and they pick up the first down thanks to some good running from Toby Cole after he got some excellent holes opened up by that Greyhound offensive front line. So the offensive line doing a great job all season long for the Greyhounds, hoping to have another good game for them. The Greyhounds with a deep formation now, now switching it, sending Taylor and Hansman wide to the right. Pro set behind Padgett, Cole, and Sharp are the running backs. Padgett hands it off to the first man through. That is Cole breaking some tackles. He's inside the 35, dropped, still on his feet, down to the 23-yard line. Great run that time from Cole. Once again, breaking the line of scrimmage for another Greyhound first down. Toby Cole opens it up big, that time breaking open for more than enough for the first down yardage. Actually, it was about an 18-yard pickup on the play. So Toby Cole has moved at 28 yards this half off just the first two carries of the first half by anybody. The Greyhounds now in excellent field position. Greyhounds doing a lot of shifting. Gunderson and Harrington move wide to the left. Cole and Sharp are Padgett's running backs in the pro set. Cole gets called once again, tripped up at the line of scrimmage dropped over the 20-yard line. He's about the 19-yard line. Short gain on the play that time. 10.45 left to go in the third quarter. Greyhounds on top, 14 to nothing in the sectional final against the Marion Giants. Got a three-yard pickup for Cole right up the middle. So far, second half, Greyhounds have 32 yards rushing. All of that done by Cole here in the third quarter. Padgett over center. Harrington, rather Taylor and Hansman split wide to the wet left. Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Padgett running the option play, gives it off to Cole. Cole slips and lunges back to the line of scrimmage. He lost about a yard, maybe two. The ball will be marked on the 21-yard line of the Marion Giants. He did lose about two yards on the play. So it'll move to third and nine for the Greyhounds. Big play here as they are in striking distance just outside the 20-yard line. So now, you know, Cap, it wouldn't surprise me to see the Greyhounds take a play-action pass, probably a fake to call, and watch for Ryan Hearn to be open. We saw the boy last week catch it two times. Two tight end, three back formation for the Greyhounds. More Cole and Sharp are the backs. Padgett fake handoff, looking to the end, rather looking to the left side. Complete is Adam Ritz. Touchdown, Adam Ritz. Carmel Greyhounds pick up another six points at a great 20-yard pass reception from Padgett to Ritz. It was a fake handoff to Cole right up the middle, freezing the linebackers. Dropped back to pass, looked on the left side. There was Adam Ritz wide open at the five-yard line. He walked in for six more points for Adam Ritz. Ritz adds to his adding that to his previous six touchdowns. He had now has seven touchdowns on the year. Adam Ritz, the big senior, tied in. The point after attempt by Lovat is good, and the Greyhounds on top increase their lead 21 to nothing. So the Greyhounds take it five plays, 52 yards, and move to a 21-0 lead. Thank you to after Mark Lovat added the point after you know, and that's what Coach P.T. Morgan of Anderson said behind us a little earlier, right before the half start. He said, if Carmel comes out and scores, that's 
definitely going to control the ball game for them, and that's what, exactly what they did. Now watch for Marion. Now they need a score on this possession because now there's only 9.34 left to go on the clock in the third quarter. Time, at this point, when you're down 21 points, starts to get a little thin each time you have the ball. You have to make the most of it. Now we see Mark Elliott again to set the Greyhound kicking crew. The Hounds have used just about everybody and their brother to set the kicking crew so far in the game. We've seen each time a different person, although this is Elliott's second time, as Elliott sets the crew and Lavat sets the kick. So Lavat, the sidewinder kicker from the right side, gets a good kick. Thompson fields it at the 12. He's up to the 15, the 20 yard line, up past the 30 yard line, cuts it back to the side of the 40, breaking some tackles. Finally dragged down from behind by Lavat and Decatur. He broke it all the way up to the 44 yard line. Decatur and Lavat were able to drag him from behind. Thompson showing excellent speed that time, brought it right up the middle at the beginning, then decided to break to the left for good yardage. Cap, it wouldn't surprise me to see Marion start using Matt Johnson, a tight end junior for this team a little bit. I think we're gonna see maybe some more passes on first down for Marion. We're gonna, cause they have come back a lot this season, but now this is a true test down. 21-0, 9-24 left to go in the second half. Burke splits wide wreck. Goomery splits wide to the left. I formation behind Ginnon. Ginnon drops back to pass, looking deep down the right side for Burke. It is, it is complete at the 20 yard line by Burke. Just an outstanding catch that a 36 yard pass reception from Ginnon to Burke. Just incredible pass that time. Lavat had good coverage on Burke. Burke might have had him by about a quarter step. Both of them in there trying to pull the ball in and Burke was able to do it. So Burke with a big reception, that is his 51st yard recepting on two receptions. So he has a big receiver. Now on the first and 10, Gennon keeps it right up himself after the fake handoff. He's inside the 10 to the six yard line. Gennon breaks it in for another giant first down. So all of a sudden this giant offense is absolutely exploding off the line after the big reception to Burke, and now Ginnon with a fake handoff to Thompson, cut it inside for the first down after a big 14-yard pickup. So it'll be second, it'll be first and goal to go from the seven-yard line. Wishbone formation, McClure, Thompson, and Carter, the running backs. McClure gets the call right up the middle. He's dropped after a short gain of about two yards. He's dropped at the five-yard line. So it'll be second down, goal to go from the five. Right now, Delgado checks out as Montgomery checks back in. That's McClure's first carry as he picks up a yard, and, or excuse me, Marion has moved it 51 yards off of three plays, uh, including a 36-yard pass and a 14-yard run. So Marion takes it to the line of scrimmage once again. They have the wishbone formation, McClure, Montgomery, and Thompson. Thompson, Thompson gets the call around the left side, touchdown! Marion Giants on the wishbone around the left side. Rather, that was Carter around the left side getting the call on the pitch around the left side. Gannon carried it until Carmel got close. He pitched it around the left side. Carter waltzed in from five yards out. So they take it four plays, 56 yards for the score. Watch Marion being down this much. We might see them go for two as we do see the quarterback stay on the field. He is the holding man. The intent to kick is Andy Guyer but we could see a fake, Cap. Guyer attempts the extra point, it's up and good. So it's 21-7 here, 18-19. 8-19 left to go in the third quarter. Marion Giants are on the scoreboard. So the Greyhounds now, that still keeps the ball game a little bit in the Greyhounds' favor, 21-7. 8-19 to go, but if Marion puts together another quick drive like that, regardless on if the Greyhounds score, that's going to show that Marion does not need a lot of time in the clock. Marion, the Greyhounds are going to have to, if Marion, if they're going to give Marion any form of drive, they have to make it one that takes a lot of time off the clock. The Greyhounds now are looking to just chew the clock out as much as they can. Again, 8-19 left to go in the third quarter. 21-7 our score. The Greyhounds on top here in the sectional finals of the 1987 here in sectional four. 
in the 5A division, Carmel Greyhounds versus Marion Giants. Geyer set to kick off. This time he gets it along boot. That will be fielded by Harrington at the 15-yard line. Brings it up to the 20, the 25, over the 30, the 35, dropped over the 40-yard line. Good return that five from that time from Harrington. He did exactly what he needed to do. He just ran straight up the field, holding on to the football up to the 42-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Greyhounds on the 42-yard line. Padgett comes off from comes in from the sideline with the play to open up their second drive of the half. King leads him to the line of scrimmage. The center, Padgett sets up over in the I formation of Colin Sharp, set up behind him. Two tight ends in the ballgame, Herman and Ritz. Padgett barks out the signals left and right. Hand off to Sharp over the right side. <laughs> Tripped up and dropped at the 36 yard line. Short game that time. John Hobson in there, the first man to hit him low and knock him up, so it'll be a three-yard pickup on the play, two-yard pickup, rather, for Sharps. It'll be second down and about seven to go for the first down there, just over the 45-yard line to about the 46-yard line. Padgett sets up over center. Two tight ends on the T formation for the grounds. Cole Sharp and Moore are the running backs. Ritz and Herman are the tight ends. Hand off, rather the option play around the left side. Padgett will keep it himself. He has running room and the first down inside the 45-yard line to about the 43-yard line, 44-yard line of the Marion Giants. It'll be first and 10, a good run that time from Padgett for the first down of about 10 yards. So Padgett continuing to move that ball quite well. 46 total yards rushing here in the second half for the Greyhounds. First and 10 inside the 45 around the 44 and a half yard line. King leads him to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, seven minutes left to go in the third quarter. Power eye formation for the Greyhounds. Sh Sharp is the power man, Moore the halfback and Cole the fullback. Moore gets the call right up the middle, dropped after a short gain on the play of about one yard, maybe two on the play. So it'll be second down at about eight. The Greyhounds now need to make something happen on this second and long situation. We could see a pass by the Greyhounds. 6.30 left to go in this third quarter. 7 to 21 is our score. The Greyhounds on top with the 14-point lead over the Marion Giants. So the Greyhounds once again showing the power eye formation. Cole Sharp and Moore are the running backs. Two tight ends in the ball game. Fike pass, Padgett looking deep down the left side. It is incomplete. There's a penalty flag on the play. That will be, looks like it could be defensive pass interference. Sharp is cheering down there. He was the intended receiver coming out of the backfield. That will be a big play for the Carmel Grounds. It was second and nine. There's another flag on the pen, on the play cap. One right at the line of scrimmage. That looks to be a holding probably. Belton looks very upset. That could go against the Greyhounds on a holding. The Greyhounds then downfield later on are looking for a pass interference. Now the first penalty we get called is a holding. Pass interference against both teams. That's just going to give play over. Both cancel each other out. So uh, after a mess, a double penalty, they nullify each other. The Greyhounds have it once again at second and eight. 6-10 left to go here in the third quarter. The Greyhounds on top by 14 points, 21-7. You're listening to WHG Carmel bringing you great football action from Marion High School. Belden still a little bit upset at the line on the sidelines. Padgett back in the shotgun formation. The Greyhounds have three wideouts, two to the right, one to the left. Padgett drops back to pass. Heavy pressure from the backside. He dumps it off to Cole out of the backfield. He's to the 40, the 35, 30, 25, tripped up at the, about the 21-yard line. The ball will be marked right about there. There appears to be another flag down on the play. Coach Bell not happy with one of his linemen down on the field. That is going to go against Marion. They're talking. It's going to be a face mask call against the Marion Giants. So the Greyhounds get a big break. Coach Belden looking irate on the sidelines. I wouldn't call that upset, Cap, but with a right to be after the game now getting a little bit more out of control than what he would wish. 6-0-1 left to go on the ball game. 21-7 our score. The Greyhounds are, when I say out of control, I mean a wild ball game. The Greyhounds want more of an established game at this point. They want it run left, run right, pass if they need to but they definitely are trying to make it a very controlled situation out on the football field. Take up as much time as you can. 
and also that, you know, hey, if you get a scoring drive, that's even better. Looks like the Greyhounds now have a definite possibility after the face masking and the good Toby Cole picked up the ball now, move to the 10 yard line after a play that, after a 21 yard catch by Toby Cole, then a 15 yard face masking penalty for the Greyhounds, or rather in, against Marion. So the Greyhounds now in great shape. They move to the 10 yard line after everything has happened, it seems, on the football field. Now trying to calm things down. First and 10, just outside of the 10 yard line. Greyhounds with three backs in the backfield. Cole gets the call around the left side. He's inside the five, down to about the three yard line. Cole around the left side continuing to break tackles for a good play that time of about a pickup of about seven yards on the play. The Greyhounds can pick up the first down without scoring. So it'll be second and three after the seven yard pickup by Cole. 5.34 left to go in the third quarter. Greyhounds on top, 21 to seven. Once again, the Greyhounds with two tight ends and the full house formation. Cole gets the call over the right side and touchdown Greyhounds. Cole was able to lean over the goal line. The Greyhounds pick up another six points. They're on top now, 27 to seven. 5.25 left to go in the third quarter. A lot of scoring here in the third quarter. Carmel with two touchdowns. Marion able to punch one over the goal line. So the Greyhounds now will move the, on that one, moved it on six, or excuse me, five plays and three penalties later, 58 yards for the touchdown, featuring a Toby Cole seven yard, or excuse me, two yard run on second down for the touchdown. Mark Levite in to kick once again. Levite to attempt the extra point. It looks good, and it is no good, rather. It is off to the left. So Levite misses his first extra point in quite some time. So the score remains 27-2-7. Carmel Grounds on top 5-25 left to go in the third quarter. Grounds have shown good offensive drives so far in the ball game. They have 53 yards rushing in the second half and 42 yards passing in the second half. So far in the second half, Pat has been deadly in the air going two for two. One of those passes complete to Cole, the other one to Ritz. So Lavat will attempt to kick off one more time from the 40-yard line. Once again, Mike Delf in to set the kicking team. Since Anderson Highland, where Lavat missed his last field goal, he kicked two of them, got him good then that game, then hit five against Jake County, and then it also had extra point attempts that were good against Muncie North, Ben Davis, Jay County, and Anderson. That one missing at stopping a streak of 27. The kickoff by Levite bounces just into the end zone and will be a touchback back to the 20-yard line. That almost didn't make it to the end zone. Thompson there watching it bounce, and if that had not gotten into the end zone, a lot of grounds were there to try to recover the football. So Levite puts one into the end zone, and the Marion Giants will start over, start at first and 10 from the 20 yard line. The Greyhounds now trying to calm the game down as we mentioned back on that offensive drive. Marion, last time they had the ball, they moved it two plays and moved it 50 yards and that set up first and goal from the six. So the Greyhounds now are trying to slow down Marion, make them run the ball right at them to take up time. Yeah, formation behind again and quick snap, and it's the reverse once again. Delgado, now he wants to throw downfield. He's wide open as Carter. It is incomplete at the 49-yard line of the Carmel Greyhounds. That was a reverse pass that time. Thompson got the pitch. He handed the ball off to Delgado going around the right side. He land set up to pass when deep downfield to Carter, who was wide open at the 50-yard line. Pass was a little bit behind him and he could not find the handle. So if Carter would have pulled that one in, that would have been a definite touchdown as the closest defender to him was about five yards away. So a big play tricking the Greyhounds. Came back and an incomplete pass. So Ginnon sets up over center, pro set behind him. Ginnon drops back to pass, looking to the left side, out to Thompson. He's to the 30, the 35-yard line dropped at about the 40-yard line that time. That'll be good enough for a first down, but a 19-yard pass reception from Ginnon to Thompson coming out of the backfield there. So far in the second half, Ginnon is two for three for 30, 55 yards in the air, having a good second half as Bill Paget is on the Carmel Greyhound side. 
So the Marion Giants bring it to the line of scrimmage once again. Now they're showing the wishbone formation. Carter, Thompson, and McClure are the running backs. Two tight ends. And it's going to go around the right side. Denon's going to keep it. He cuts it inside. Gets over the 40 to about the 46-yard line. Carter was running with him along with Thompson. Carter cut inside, laying a block, and Gittin decided to take it inside as well. He picked up about seven yards on the play. So it'll be second down and about four to go. This The wishbone offense is very an odd offense to go. You see the running backs running back and forth and back and forth all game long, and that does tend to take a, a toll on the stamina. So they need to think things happen early. Once again, the wishbone formation showing. This time McClure gets the handoff. He's over midfield inside ground territory. The ball will be marked at around the 47-yard line. That will be good enough for the first down for the Marion County Giants. That is their 11th first down so far in the ball game and their fourth of the second half. 4.16 left to go in the third quarter. Grounds on top. 27 to 7. Burke splits wide to the right and coming out wide to the left is Gummery. High formation behind Ginnon and McClure and Thompson. Ginnon drops back to pass. He's going to keep it himself, running right up field and it's hit hard a couple of times at the 40 yard, 45 yard line. He picked up about three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven. You know, we mentioned about the bad part of using a wishbone. Your players might tend to get tired. There's so many options, but the good side of that, it seems like quarterback Steve Ginyon has had just about any one of six men to go to on any given play. It leaves a lot of options open, a lot like the Greyhounds using the T formation, but yet even more options using the wishbone that Marion uses so well and so often. So again, it comes to the line of scrimmage, shaking his head as he got his head rung going into the line of scrimmage. Uh, wishbone formation, Thompson gets the call over the left side, and it's a fumble, and picking it up down the right side goes Moore. That will be a, he's on the five, touchdown Greyhounds. An unusual play, it looks like he just stripped the ball from him at the 45-yard line. Nobody really saw him until he was about at the 30-yard line, and he waltzed in for the touchdown. Incredible play that time. Moore ran about 45 yards for the touchdown off the fumble recovery. That is the third defensive touchdown the Greyhounds have scored this year. One, a Trent Decatur interception. Then another one came off of a Brian Vaughn interception and now a fumble recovery, or you'd call that a steal basically, not a fumble, but good heads up play by Moore. Lavad set to kick the extra point. This one's through there, good. So Lavad comes back after missing the one before, hits this one, and the ground still remain on top, 34 to seven. Breaking it open here after that Moore touchdown, 55 yard run on the fumble recovery for Moore. 3.11 left to go in the third quarter. Grounds on top, 34 to seven. Lavad will be set to kick off once again to the deep man, Thompson. He'll be standing back at his own 10-yard line. Well, Cap, that definitely the icing on the cake and the last nail in the coffin, possibly, for the Marion Giants. The Greyhounds now looking to upset the Marion Giants, who have been ranked throughout the season. A very good team. We've seen excellent play by them. Going into the Knights game, they were ranked fifth in the state. The winner of this ball game will take on the winner of Fort Wayne Snyder and Penn. Penn, the heavy favorite. Fort Wayne Snyder has seen some top 10 rankings. Penn, of course, ranked number one throughout the year. An excellent ball team in them. Regardless now of who the Greyhounds play next week or who, if, of course, they do go on to beat Marion, but if they do win, they will play at home regardless if it's Snyder or Penn, and I think that the coaches would like to face either team, Penn because they're the best team in the state, and Fort Wayne Snyder because of an excellent matchup they had last year. 3-11 now left to go in the third quarter of this ball game. 34 to seven the score, the Greyhounds on top. The Greyhounds taking some extra time getting this kickoff set up. I don't think we're gonna see any major leak changes or any spoofs that they might try to call. I think just trying to relax things down, continue to have a controlled game for the Greyhounds. Mark Lavat set to do the kick for the Hounds. Back deep to receive the deepest man is Richie Thompson for the Giants. So Lavat sets to get into it. Another 
kick. This one off to the left side, fielded by Carter at the 10 yard line, and he is down. His knee touched the ground as he was trying to field the ball. So another bad break for the Marion Giants. He is down at the 11 yard line. Marion will take over first and 10 from the 11 yard line. Just over three minutes left to go. Third quarter, Greyhounds on top, 34 to seven. You know, Kep, it just seems that Marion's not able to get a break this evening. This kind of reminds us back when the Greyhounds knocked off Ben Davis. Uh, just everything has gone the Greyhounds' way. They've made big plays, and they've. But the more and most important thing is that they've made things happen. They haven't, lad. All the good breaks have gone their way. They've just really made things happen. Now three minutes left to go in the third quarter. The Hounds on top. So the wishbone offense once again for the Marion Giants. This time the handoff goes right up the middle to Thompson. He has hit at the line of scrimmage, and he may have. He might have even lost maybe a yard on the play that time. It will be second and 11 from the 10 yard line for the Marion Giants. So far in the second half, the Marion Giants have picked up 39 yards rushing, 55 yards in the air. So with 230 left to go in the, 230 left to go in the third quarter, we may wanna, may start seeing the Giants starting to open things up and going to the air. Gummery splits wide left, Burke out wide right. Single back formation for the Giants. Thompson moves in motion to the right. Ginnon drops back to pass, dumps one off to Thompson out of the backfield. He is hit and knocked out of bounds at the 15 yard line after the complete pass from Ginnon to Thompson. That'll be about a five yard pass reception from Ginnon to Thompson. The ball is marked at around the 15 yard line. So call that a six yard reception from Ginnon to Thompson. Thompson's coming out of the backfield that time, going in motion to the right. Greyhounds in practice, worked a lot on motion, so they should be set for him in this ball game. 2.13 left to go in the ball game. Carmel Greyhounds on top, 35-7. Third quarter here in Carmel Greyhounds. Ginnon drops back to pass, looking deep downfield, dropped for a sack that time. The Greyhounds dropped him for a loss of a few yards, a lot of Greyhounds in there. Some new faces on the Carmel Greyhound defensive line. A loss of about four yards on the play. So the punting unit appears as if they're coming. The punting unit first, yes, the punting unit will be coming in the ball game. It'll be fourth down and nine inside the 20 yard line around the 12 yard line. Coming in doing the punting will be Krabby. One of the, now they're sh now coming in will be Rickman coming in there. Scott Rickman, he will be beating from his own end zone back deep for the grounds is Herman. Rickman gets a low kickoff, will be fielded by Herman at the 38-yard line. He fumbles it, but he falls on it at the 37-yard line of the Marion Giants. But there is a penalty flag on the play. We'll wait and see what that is. Carmel Grounds on top, 34-7, a minute 21 left to go in the third quarter. The penalty flag thrown back near the original line of scrimmage. That's going to either be an illegal block or a hold. They're talking to the Greyhounds, talking to one of the Greyhound captains. That's lineman David Kennedy uh, holding on Marion. The Greyhounds, of course, declining it. No reason to have them repunt it this time from a five-yard line. Unless, of course, they wanted to get the block, which the Greyhounds have come awful close to. They've come awful close to blocking a couple punts this season. I'm looking at about any time now for either Decatur or Kennedy to bust through and break open and block a punt here in this season. First and 10 for the Greyhounds. I formation behind Paget Cole and Sharp are the running backs. Gunnarsson is split wide to the right. Sharp gets the call over the right tackle. He gets over the 35-yard line, close to around the 33-yard line, a pickup about four on the carry. We see it starting to sprinkle here in Marion, here at the Marion High School football field. We see the fans now starting to cover up. I didn't know, you can't really tell looking through this press box. You're kind of looking in the lights, but we see some rain splattering on the windows, so that's even going to make the field conditions worse and slow down the game, something the Greyhounds want. So 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Three back formation for the Greyhounds. Two tight ends, Moore, Cole, and Sharp are the running backs. Cole gets the call around the right side over the 30, to the 25 yard line dropped at the 23 yard line of the Marion Giants. Now under 30 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Greyhounds well in command here, 34 to seven advantage. That will be another first down for the Greyhounds as he got inside the 25 yard line. A pickup of 10 yards on the play. 
for 67 total yards rushing for the Greyhounds in the second half. Cole now has reached the century mark with 100 yards in the ball game. Two tight ends, three back formation for the Greyhounds. Cole Sharp and Moore, the running backs. It, Cole gets the call right up the middle to about the 20 yard line inside the 20 to the 19 of the Marion Giants. He picked up about four yards, three yards on, four yards on the carry. It'll be second down and six. Toby Cole hit originally at the line of scrimmage that time, but the stallion fullback just busted through and made up about four yards as the fourth quarter comes to an end. So the Greyhounds after, th or excuse me, the third quarter comes to an end after three full quarters of play. The Hounds are on top, 34 to seven over the fifth ranked Marion Giants. The Hounds looking to be giant killers, so to speak, knocking off. Marion would be a definite boost for the team this season. Now we have 12 more minutes left to go. That's the fourth corner. And Marion, an interesting thing, they do have quite a few returners from last year, and they have a solid foundation for this year. So I'm sure Coach Mayor David is really happy with his program. The Marion football program really turning around, becoming a very strong program, but also you could have to say they have one of the best basketball programs in the state. So Padgett sets up over center, the full house formation, three backs in the backfield, Cole Sharp and Moore are the running backs, second down and six inside the 20 yard line. The option play around the left side, pitch back to Moore, Moore fumbles the ball, he is trying to get to it and it is, there is a scramble for the football and it, it is Marion Giant football at around the 32 yard line. Moore just did not get a handle on the ball. The pitch from Padgett was a little bit high and behind Moore but Padgett was hit just as he released the ball. Moore could find the handle and tried to fall on the ball at around the 25 yard, yard line. It's quartered loose and was recovered at the 31. An interesting point, Cap. Neither team, well, one time a team has recovered their own fumble. Every other fumble in the ball game has been a turnover and boy, we've had a slew of fumbles here. Eight fumbles so far in the ball game. So Gannon sets up over center the wishbone Formation. There's a timeout here called for the Carmel Greyhounds. So during this timeout, we'll take a 60 second booster timeout. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. of financial services and sound advice only at Indiana National. Welcome back to Carmel, or rather Marion High School. Yancey Deering along with Cap Carmichael bringing you this evening's ball game. Now the Greyhounds on first down called a timeout. They only had 10 men on the field. But then the Greyhounds get an unsportsmanlike conduct a 15-yard penalty that goes against the Greyhounds. Now that's going to move the ball out to the 45 yard line on the 15 yard penalty. We're not sure where they picked up the unsportsmanlike conduct. It appears that the rain has held off for the time being. It sprinkled for about a minute and a half and then quit. So now that Marion will break the huddle and start at first and 10 from their own 45 yard line. The start of the second fourth quarter has just gotten underway 11:44 left in the ball game wishbone formation for the Marion Giants handoff right up the middle to McClure fumble on the play and it is recovered by the Carmel Greyhounds it looked like David Kennedy was the first one in there getting the fumble a lot of people in on the play McClure was the one who fumbled the football and it does appear that David Kennedy was the one recovering the football that is the fifth fumble by the Marion Giants fourth one that has been recovered by the Carmel Greyhounds. So first and 10 for the Greyhounds as they get another break. They'll have it first and 10 on the 47 yard line 
of the Marion Giants. Padgett comes in from the sideline, bringing the play in to tell the rest of his teammates. 11.33 left to go, win the ball game. Greyhounds on top, 34-7. Padgett over center with the two tight ends, and now they're switching just a single tight end. Taylor and Hansman move wide to the right. I formation behind Padgett with Cole Sharp. Padgett gives the ball to the right side to Cole, and he is hit in the backfield. He was able to lunge and get about to the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty flag on the play. Something that Greyhounds made a great call on the play. We saw Marion come up in a strong tornado defense. They were going to come. They were looking for a sack. Now downfield, the penalty was called a personal foul against the Greyhounds, so another penalty is going to kill the Hounds at this point, 11-10 left to go, 34-7. I'm sure temper's flaring a little bit, especially after the kind of ball game we've seen. But both teams have played with a lot of class. Neither team has really given up, and they both have showed great sportsmanship, uh, except, of course, the unsportsmanlike conduct that went against the Greyhounds a little earlier. It's to Toby Cole gained nothing or lost nothing. Now, a 15-yard penalty is going to bring up second down and 27 yard, or excuse me, 25 yards. So the Greyhounds definitely looking to go upstairs. So watch for the Hounds to put in a big pass right now. So King leads him to the line of scrimmage. There is an official timeout here. There is a equipment timeout, rather. It appears as if number 45 on the Giants, Greg Taylor, what didn't have a mouthpiece, so he came out to get one. So a small time out here, and then now the ground's going back in the huddle. They're gonna rethink things now. It'll be second down, 25 yards for the first down after the unsportsmanlike conduct on the personal foul on the Carmel Grounds. 11 minutes left to play in the ball game. 34, 37 are score. Carmel Grand's on top. Padgett takes him to the line of scrimmage. Pro set behind him. Colin Sharp are his running back. Fumble on the play. Scramble for the football. There is a scramble for the football. It did not appear that Padgett had the ball. He uh, seemed to drop back a little bit too soon. Didn't have the ball when he dropped back. And it looks like the grounds did recover the football. So now it'll be third down and 25 yards. Well, I'm sure we'll see Bill Padgett drop back in the shotgun formation. Now is when that defensive line, or excuse me, the offensive line for the Greyhounds, Hebert, Bowen, King, Towner, and Pesic need to tighten up, form a good pocket for Bill to stay in. Also, Toby Cole, who's a good blocking running back, and so is Mike Sharp. Mike Sharp also does a heck of a job blocking. They also send Tom Moore, or excuse me, Hansman in for the Greyhounds. Hansman splits wide right, Taylor wide left, Cole and Sharp in the backfield behind Padgett. Fumble on the snap once again. The look for the football and no indication yet. And once again, that the exact same thing happened this time as did last time. King and Padgett are just not getting that snap right now. Uh, it appears as if the Grounds did recover the football, but it will be fourth down and 25 yards for the first down, and Chris Rasmussen appears as if he will be coming in to do the punting duties for the Greyhounds. You know, in all that mix-up, the Greyhounds gained about six inches on the two plays, on the fumbles. Here comes Rasmussen for, I believe, just the second time this evening, or first time, first time this evening we've seen Chris Rasmussen to punt. And the Greyhounds take a timeout, so we'll take one. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. When you go, when you are poor, you eat pizza for. Delicious toppings, incredible crust. Make no mistake, there's just one place that's us. Go to the very end. Pizza King, pizza, pizza King, pizza. They make it good. Pizza King Pizza is right next door. Call Pizza King in Carmel for your next pizza or stop by our restaurant at 902 South Range Line Road. Call 848-7994 for our fast free delivery. Pizza King is open at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday for your lunchtime orders. That makes us Eight four eight seven nine nine four for Pizza King Pizza. Well, Yancey Deering and Kep Carmichael with the action. 
wild fourth quarter here from Mon Marion High School. So far, the Greyhounds, now the last two plays, they fumbled off of, from center, then the, the play before that, Toby Cole ran for nothing. The last Greyhound to touch the ball was Tom Moore. Then the last possession on second down, and he fumbled, and then Marion fumbled. So Rasmussen in for the punt. He gets an end over end punt that is fielded at the 35 yard line. It was fumbled again, and a scramble for the football looks as if Marion recovered. So fumbles all over the field. So it'll be first and 10 for the Marion Giants inside the 35 at around the 33 yard line. There are a couple Marion Giants down on the field. That appears to be number 45, Greg Taylor. And number 26, Richie, rather number 25, Carlos Hernandez are both down on the field. They, they were both the ones scrambling for the football. That was Thompson down. So they're still looking and checking right now on Taylor. Taylor, a defensive back, usually a senior on this football team. He's down. Looks like he's not going to get up for a time. So we'll take this booster timeout here with 9.13 left to go in the fourth quarter. You're listening to the voice of the Greyhounds. of financial services and sound advice only at Indiana National. Welcome back to Marion High School. Marion on the first down run. Carter took it over the left side, then cut back inside. But there is a penalty flag on the play that appears to be holding uh, against the Marion Giants. So uh, a lot of penalties here in the ball game, a lot of fumbles in the ball game. 8.57 left to go in the ball game. Greyhounds on top, 34-7 from Marion High School. Sectional final here from Marion High School. That will be a 10-yard penalty marked off uh, against Marion. That is their second penalty in the second half. 20 yards penalized in the second half, a uh, total of 72 yards penalized on the Marion Giants. So first and 20, as Ginnon, the quarterback, takes him to the line of scrimmage. Eye formation behind him, McClure and Thompson are the running backs. Two men out wide to the left. Thompson gets a pitch back. He wants to go downfield with it, going for Burke at the 40-yard line, incomplete. Burke could not get a handle on it. It was tipped around there. Tom Moore, the defensive back, on the play, giving him good tight coverage, would not let him come down with it. So Thompson tried to go upstairs once again. That's the second time we've seen a Marion running back go upstairs with the ball. Neither of them have been caught. Kep, there's been 10 official plays in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, of those 10 plays, there's been three fumbles. In addition, there's been three penalties. So this has been a wild fourth quarter, and we still have eight minutes and 42 seconds left to go in it. Split formation behind Ginnon. Ginnon drops back to pass, looking 